NASCAR is on the verge of a significant transformation with its new charter agreement, a development that could reshape the landscape of motorsport investment. Reports indicate that this new charter system may include a crucial clause that could exclude sovereign wealth funds or SWFs from investing in the sport. This potential change is not just a minor adjustment, it represents a fundamental shift in how NASCAR operates and interacts with financial entities. The global popularity of NASCAR has surged recently, particularly following the release of Netflix's docuseries Full Speed. This series has brought a new audience to the sport, comparable to the attention Formula One received with its own media initiatives. The charter system, which is similar to Formula One's Concord Agreement, plays a pivotal role in ensuring financial security and visibility for teams. It guarantees that teams have spots on the starting grid and provides stable revenue flows, which are crucial for their operations. Currently, negotiations are underway to finalize this new charter system between NASCAR and the team owners. According to Adam Stern of the Sports Business Journal, a significant aspect of these negotiations is the proposed ban on investments from sovereign wealth funds. These funds, typically backed by national revenues, have been expanding their reach into various sectors, including sports. A prominent example is Saudi Arabia's Public Investment Fund, which has made headlines for its investments in entities like LEV Golf and Newcastle United. The PIF has also invested heavily in projects like the Kidia Mega Project, which is set to include a new Formula One racetrack. NASCAR is negotiating a new charter agreement with teams and showing how active the private equity sector is. Drafts include rules for such investments. Stern wrote, The guidelines could include a ban on sovereign wealth funds in NASCAR, a maximum percentage that a fund can acquire and language pertaining to who the main governing partner or control person can be. However, the involvement of SWFs in sports has not come without controversy. Accusations of sports washing have emerged, suggesting that some nations may use sports investments to divert attention from less favorable aspects of their policies, including human rights violations. By potentially excluding SWFs, NASCAR aims to protect itself from these ethical dilemmas and political entanglements. To understand the implications of this proposed change, it's essential to grasp the charter system itself. Introduced in 2016, the charter system was designed to bring stability and business certainty to NASCAR teams. Currently, there are 36 charters, each subject to performance standards. If a charter team finishes in the bottom three for three consecutive years, NASCAR reserves the right to revoke that charter. Furthermore, a single team can hold a maximum of four charters. This system ensures that each team has guaranteed entry into every race, thereby protecting their share of the prize money. Consequently, owning a charter elevates the value of a team well beyond its tangible assets as it assures potential sponsors that their investments will yield returns over time. The current charters are set to expire at the end of 2024, coinciding with the expiration of NASCAR's media rights deal. When the charter system was first introduced, charters were available at no cost. However, their value has skyrocketed, with reports indicating that teams have sold or leased charters for as much as $40 million. For the upcoming 2025 season, the estimated cost of acquiring a charter is projected to be between $25 and $30 million. As noted by driver Brad Keselowski, charter teams generate substantial revenue, with estimates suggesting that each team earns around $8 to $9 million annually. This revenue is distributed based on race performance, creating a competitive environment where teams are incentivized to perform well. The interest from private equity firms in NASCAR has also been growing. As these firms look to invest in the sport, NASCAR is taking steps to establish guidelines for private equity buy-ins. This includes defining how much control these firms can exert and setting limits on their ownership stakes. For instance, Trackhouse Entertainment Group recently announced a deal with Avenue Sports Fund resulting in a significant minority stake in the organization. Despite the ongoing interest from private equity, the potential ban on sovereign wealth funds is a noteworthy aspect of NASCAR's negotiation strategy. SWFs are state-owned investment firms that manage funds generated by the government. These funds can be utilized for various purposes, including paying off national debt, investing in domestic industries, or providing social services. 
The controversy surrounding SWF investments often revolves around the concept of sports washing. This term refers to the practice of using sports investments to distract from a country's human rights issues. NASCAR's potential exclusion of SWFs could be seen as a proactive measure to shield the sport from any undue political influence that might arise from such investments. As negotiations progress, the exact terms of the new charter agreement remain fluid. The discussions are ongoing, and the proposed ban on SWFs is still under evaluation. NASCAR is keen to ensure that any new rules regarding private equity investments are clearly defined, as these changes could significantly impact the sport's financial landscape. The current status of these negotiations is uncertain. While team owners express a desire for increased revenue and closer collaboration with NASCAR, the governing body aims to maintain a stable revenue-sharing model. The complexities of these negotiations reflect the broader dynamics within the sport, as team owners seek to secure their financial futures while NASCAR strives to preserve the integrity of the series. In the context of the broader market, NASCAR charters are relatively affordable compared to investments in other major professional sports leagues. The NBA, NFL, and MLB often require billions to become an owner, while a NASCAR charter can be acquired for a fraction of that cost. This affordability makes NASCAR an attractive option for investors. But it also necessitates proactive measures to safeguard the sport's future. As the playoffs approach, the urgency of finalizing the new charter agreement becomes more pronounced. Team owners, including prominent figures like Denny Hamlin and Brad Keselowski, have voiced their opinions on the need for more revenue and stability. However, NASCAR appears focused on maintaining the status quo with only minor adjustments to ensure smooth operations. Brad Keselowski, the complexities of the negotiations underscore the balance between the interests of team owners and the governing body. While racing continues, the future of NASCAR's charter system hangs in the balance, with significant implications for the sport's financial landscape and its relationship with investors. The potential exclusion of sovereign wealth funds from NASCAR's investment landscape marks a pivotal moment in the sport's history. As discussions continue, the outcome of these negotiations will shape the future of NASCAR, influencing everything from team operations to the overall integrity of the sport. The stakes are high, and the decisions made in the coming months will undoubtedly have lasting effects on the NASCAR Cup Series and its teams. If you enjoyed our analysis, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to NASCAR Insider.